Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Discriminating Gamer. Say, what did Yoda say when he saw himself in 4K? HDMI. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Star Wars The Clone Wars from Z-Man Games. We'll get back to the review in just a moment. I want to take a minute to ask you to check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about history, books on history, military history. I even post some of my uh, lectures for my classes on there. Please check that out. Please subscribe to that channel. And now, back to the review. In Star Wars The Clone Wars from Z-Man Games, one to five players take on the role of the valiant Jedi Knights as they attempt to thwart the plans of the evil Separatists and their army of robots. Now, the game board is a map of the Star Wars galaxy. You have various systems that are uh, connected to other systems along pathways. You have along the outside edge of the board place for various cards, and then you have tracks on the boards to keep track of uh, things you'll need to know. Now, at the beginning of the game, players are going to select one of several baddies. These are Count Dooku, Darth Maul, Darth Grievous, um... You're going to go ahead, Ventress, you're going to put these uh, bad guys kind of face up at the top of the board. And they're also going to have their own unique villain deck that you'll also place right next to them. You're also going to create the invasion planets. The first thing you're going to do is take out two cards that say mission in different colors, place them face up in the discard, and then you're going to shuffle the invasion cards and put them down at that spot as well. Next, you're going to have the mission cards, you're going to shuffle them, and you're going to reveal two of those mission cards, placing them face down in the spots uh, for them. Now, depending on how many players you have and what the difficulty level you want, you can go ahead and adjust how many missions you want to have. An easy game is going to be three missions, and then you can get more difficult adding more missions from there. Now, next, players are going to select which Jedi Knights they're going to play. Now, they can play, of course, Yoda, Mace Windu, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, uh, Ashoka, and Anakin Skywalker, and a few others as well. You go ahead and you, you, you draw a card that says where their starting position is. You're also going to start with a few uh, droid armies on the board in different locations as well. You're also going to shuffle the squad cards and place those uh, next to the board as well. Now, on your turn, there's going to be four critical things that happen. The first thing you're going to do is ready any cards. Now, you will be acquiring these squad cards as the game goes on, and you will need to ready them. Essentially, they'll be tapped when they're used, so you have to bring them back up in order to use them correctly. Next, you have the ability to do four actions. Now, you can repeat actions. You can do the same action over again. Um... And what you do is, first of all, you can fly, meaning you can move from one system to a neighboring adjacent system that is connected along a path. Next, you can reinforce. Essentially, you can draw a squad card. Now, you have a maximum uh, hand size of seven uh, cards. So if you already have seven and you draw one, you're going to have to immediately discard another one. Now, next, if you're on a location where you have um, enemy villains, uh, droids, blockades, you can go ahead and you can uh, attack them. Now, what you're going to do during an attack is you're going to roll a die, but you can also play squad cards that can give you additional um, attack value. You roll the die, and for every symbol you get for attack, you deal that many points of damage. But the droids take one damage, the blockades take two damage, and the villains are track damage on their, on their board. Now, before you can attack the villain or the droids, you actually first have to attack the blockade. You would remove that, you remove the droids, and then if you uh, succeed in dealing enough damage to the villain, you actually remove the villain from the board and you put them back on their um, card and future events may bring them back onto the board. 
Now also, you may deal yourself damage with that die. There may be damage that is dealt to you and other conditions may, may cause that to happen. If that occurs and you have damage that is dealt to you, uh, you, there are some squad cards you can play, you can tap in order to deflect that. Otherwise, you're going to have to discard a card from your uh, from your uh, squads uh, that will again act as a like your damage point. If you are on a planet with a specific colored mission, you can go ahead and try to resolve that mission. If you resolve that mission, you roll a die, but you can also place cards that are allowed for on that specific mission card, certain types of cards that are allowed for. But you can go ahead and try to get up to that success number. But if there are other Jedi that are also on that same planet, they too can contribute cards in order to help you with that success. Now, if you go ahead and are successful and you resolve that uh, mission, you go ahead, take that card, remove it, and then you place a new card there, uh, assuming you have more missions to resolve. Now, you can also play your Jedi cards. Some of your Jedi cards will let you do different abilities. For instance, uh, there's some abilities that will let you move two spaces instead of just one. So that's another action you can do is play cards uh, that they have specific things. You also have some of your cards are allies, and these allies can give you very special and significant actions that you can also do on your turn. Now, the third phase of your turn is to activate your villain. So what you do is, first of all, you look, and some villains may have this kind of reminder token that says under certain conditions, certain things happen, so you have to check for that. Some villains don't have that. Then you need to draw a card for that specific villain, and that, that card is going to tell you certain things. It may place a villain that is off the board back on the board, or it may move them, or it may cause them to do some other funky things on there. So you go ahead and you resolve that villain card, and some of them can be pretty nasty. Now, after you've resolved the villain card, you go to the last phase of your turn, which is the invasion phase. Now, during the invasion phase, you check the invasion track. It's going to tell you how many cards you're going to draw. You draw that many cards, and those cards are going to tell you where to add droids, which planets to add droids. So you go ahead and you add a droid there. Now, if ever you've already got three droids there and you need to add another droid, instead of adding that other droid, you create an occupation, which means you pay, place a blockade marker down there, a, a blockade figure. If the blockade figure is there, again, it increases the strength of the occupying army. Now, as I say, if a planet has a blockade on it and the Jedi go there, they have to take damage on the blockade. If they deal any damage, the 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 enemies have to take damage on the blockade before the Jedi can do anything else, before he can attack a villain, before he can attack a, a droid, and before he can go on a mission. Now, if you have to place a blockade marker and there are no more blockade markers left, then you advance the threat track on the board. Now, if ever the threat marker gets to the last space on the track, you lose immediately. Once you have completed all of the missions, then you flip over the villain card to its finale side. This villain will have a very specific finale. You will have to beat the villain in their finale conditions. And if you and your friends can do that, then you win! Star Wars The Clone Wars. So, Star Wars The Clone Wars is a riff on Pandemic. Essentially, this is a Star Wars-themed version of Pandemic. Now, I gotta tell you, I was never a big fan of Pandemic. I thought it was okay, but you know, it's one of those games that people went on and on and on and on about. But you know, I liked it. I didn't love it. I thought it was good, not great. Um, and yet, I really wanted to play this Star Wars version of it, because first of all, I, I really like Star Wars. Yes, even the prequels. Not the sequels, though. The, oh my gosh, the Disney stuff's crap. Few rays of light here and there, but the movies were terrible. But uh, I do like the prequels. Don't love them as much as the OT, but, but, but I like them. And so I was kind of interested in playing this, this game. I was kind of interested in playing this, um, kind of going into this universe and playing the system. It sounded like a lot of fun. And I was intrigued because this particular version has some differences. For instance, the, the, the droids don't spread like they do in Pandemic. You get the blockades. Um, but also, too, the idea of the, the missions, I thought, was, was pretty cool. So I, so I actually bought a copy of this game. I really, first of all, it does a good job of sucking you into the to the Star Wars universe. You really do feel like you're the Jedi's trying to put out these fires in, in the in in the Clone Wars. You do get a sense of what was going on in the film from the game. But I really like the variety of the missions. I thought was a lot of fun, and I liked um, kind of the squad cards and, and and how some of them are allies that give you very like powerful things. But then of course you got to get rid of those cards. Um, and then the, the way you've got those tableau and the cards also act as kind of almost your, your, your health points as you're being attacked there. I liked how you, when you roll the die, you're going to deal damage, but you got a chance of doing damage to yourself. I really enjoy that, that kind of risk and that tension when you roll the die for that. And, um, 
And also, too, component-wise, I think it's just quite good. You've got these really nice markers for the missions and, and other things. I, I, I think they're, they're generally the components here are very well. The minis are fun as well. This is a really good production. Um, and, and I think it would have been really easy to make this just kind of a really lazy production and just do the cash grab. But they really did a good job with it here, and I was really impressed with it uh, from a component standpoint. Uh, but the game was fun. It's it's a lot of fun. It's a game of putting out fires. You know, it's it's pandemic. You're you're running around trying to put out these fires. But it's 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 fun and it's tense and it's tough. Um, I have I, I, I see. I won. Yeah, I have won it. I have won it once. But it is it, it's 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 it gives you a run for your money. I mean, there's there's times there where the stuff's just coming out and coming out and coming out, and you're you you well, I've got to get this done but I got to take these guys out or I'm in trouble, you know, and, and it does it so well. And it's so unrelenting. And the fact that the, the villains and the invasions happen on your turn, uh, you know, is, is kind of creepy. Um, it's not like all the guys, all the good guys go and then it's a villain turn. It's like, no, every, every turn you take, some of these bad things are going to happen. It was just a lot of fun. It was frankly, I mean, I was looking forward to it, but it was more fun than I thought it was going to be. But I really enjoyed this one. Had a ton of fun with Star Wars The Clone Wars. Recommendation for the Discriminating Gamer for Star Wars The Clone Wars is buy it. Well, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. I'd also ask you, ladies and gentlemen, to please check out my other channel, that is Cody Carlson PhD, where we talk about books on history and uh, military history, and I started recently posting some of my lectures on there as well. Please check it out, please subscribe, and we'd also ask you to please give a thumb to this video on Board Game Geek, that helps us out a lot as well. You know, kids, how did Darth Vader know what Luke was getting him for his birthday? He felt his presence. We need more energy. If we're going into war, we need energy. You know, Hannibal knew that, all right? Themistocles knew that, and now you know. <laughs>